So it is Graziano who usually does overreaction Tuesday. But is that an overreaction to say it's a two team race now in the NFC? Oh, 100 percent. Listen, they're 10 and three. We've seen teams win the Super Bowl yeah. that got bludgeoned during the regular season. Yeah. So I think that's a really big overreaction. And another question you had asked me in the meeting yeah. was about Jalen Hurts and whether he was healthy. Right. Well, when you look at his run carries over the past five games, yeah. he's ran it 5, 7, 14, 12, and 10 times. Right. So he's not shying away from running the football. Right. And I don't think that's really a problem for them. In this game against the Cowboys, your best players have to play their best in big time games. They didn't do that. Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith, and A.J. Brown all had a fumble in Cowboys territory, yeah. and that's why they got blood. Jeff, there's been a lot of writing off of the Eagles going on the last couple of days. Is that going too far? Way too far. I mean, listen, when the 49ers lost three in a row, and by the way, the Bengals went to their place and beat them 31 or 17 or 14, whatever the score was, we didn't write the 49ers off, right? Like, they've beaten good teams, man. They beat the, they beat the Bills, the Chiefs, Cowboys, Dolphins. By, like, they've beaten good teams. Mm -hmm. They are not playing well right now. There's a good thing you got four games left against four teams that you should win. And by the way, when you go into the playoffs on a four-game win streak, it changes things. Hey, hence the Cowboys before before these, these last four weeks. I think what scares people about the Eagles is that the wins that they're having are in such tight situations. They mm -hmm. could go either way. So, yes, they're 10-3. and three, But you could create a scenario where the record is a lot worse and they aren't pulling away from people and when you watch these games I think the turnovers were an issue on offense but we don't have an easy excuse for why they struggle on defense there's nothing They're that you can go up. fix they have personnel issues on defense that they can't address and their D-line can't overcome I think that's the most significant issue right the back end of the defense and their inability to stop people in terms of explosive plays in terms of big plays when the team it's to their credit that they have found a way to win close games against good teams right like it's one thing to say, oh, good teams should be dominating. Fair enough. But they're not playing their best in the, until the last couple of weeks. They were finding ways to win. So that's their credit. We know they, can, they know how to get to the Super Bowl. And, and so we can't write them off. But the defense has to play better. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. You talk oh, yeah. about games they can win. They got to beat DeVito twice, man. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know. Those games but, don't suddenly look quite as, as, as guaranteed to be victories as they did. Let me ago. say this about them. The, the, part of the issue for the defense is that the offense – is it, it they aren't they aren't dominating they were the way they were last year in the run game staying on the field right now the Eagles can't get off the field on defense but they're not extending drives offensively and they get that they have three drives against the Cowboys and, and all three are scoring drives so now you're out of your game plan against the Cowboys now you're gonna have to throw it to get back in the game like some of that goes to game specific situations that they have not played well Rex was making a big point here yesterday about the defensive coordinator everyone has talked a lot about them losing their Offensive coordinator Shane Syke, and they also lose the defensive coordinator. And Rex, essentially, what Rex said yesterday is, "I'm sitting on my couch, and I can call out what they're doing uh, defensively. If I can see it, then obviously the opposing team can see it." Yeah, when you have a defensive line like they have, I think normally you want to just keep it simple. You don't want to overcomplicate it, but you need your defensive line to completely dominate. But they're mm. playing against smart quarterbacks and smart offensive minds who understand that that's the strategy, and they're finding ways to attack the second level at defense more quickly. Yeah, we talked about them needing to get off the football field. Yeah. They're 32nd in the league, which is dead last yeah. in third downs. Mm -hmm. Their sack rate last season on third down, they were first in the NFL. Yeah. This year, they're last. So when I look at this defense, they're 28th in points per game. They're not getting teams off the football field. And, and at the end of the day, their defensive line is dominant because they are really good against the run. But you know why they're great against the run? Because ain't nobody running it against them. <laughs> right. They're throwing the football. They're 31st in the league in touchdowns given up. So this Eagles team who lost their defensive coordinator and also lost five starters on the defense yeah. has to figure out a way on the back end to get it done. And it is going to be with that defensive I line. I actually box. thought defensively that was the most alarming thing the other night because yeah. they were not great against the run early in that game. Mm -hmm. Dallas was picking up third downs because they had third and one. Absolutely. Right? And, and that, and so that was an issue that they haven't been having that surfaced against the team they need to beat. They wound up only having less than 23 minutes of, of total possession time the Eagles because you can't get off the field on third down and that's a recipe for disaster all the time fact or fiction hey Graziano uh, the Broncos are going to catch the Chiefs in the AFC West is that fact or fiction it's fiction I, I mean you, you look at it and you're like oh my gosh they're a game behind you can't believe it but the rest of the Chiefs schedule is four very winnable games for a team that yes has been struggling but has the opportunity to get back on the right track Chiefs are just, at their worst, the Chiefs are just a better overall team than Denver. I believe they hold on for an eighth 
straight division title. Dominique, you're next. If I said Brock Purdy is the most important player on the 49ers, is that fact or fiction? It's absolute fact. I no. think, yeah, yes. I, I think you watch the way that he's played. And also, you want to disagree with Trent Williams? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, he's a quarterback. The most important player on almost every contending team is the quarterback. It feels disrespectful to say Brock Purdy's not, particularly when you're watching these games. They do have yeah. a lot of really great uh, skill players, but they can replace the skill players. They can't replace the quarterback. Yeah, let's, 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 let's talk about that one again. Let's talk about that one again. RG3, if I said the Cowboys will win the NFC East, is that fact or fiction? I'm going to say it's fiction. If I'm the Cowboys, you want to keep it on simmer right now. We saw them go through a tough stretch in the middle of the year, but these last four games, the Eagles are playing against four teams that have losing records. Yep. The Cowboys are going up against, I believe, the Dolphins, the Buffalo Bills, yes. and the Lions. And don't forget those commanders there at the end of the year. They yep. always play them tough. So I would say it's fiction right now because of the way the schedule's set up. And, and that, that's an interesting yeah. scenario. Dan is going to point out how long it's been since any team has 19, repeated 19 in the NFC East, long, right? Long, long, long. It's your favorite statistic in all of football. 19, 19 years. I got him trained. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, but Plus the, DeVito twice. De, How are you going right. to beat DeVito Stop. twice? Th that's right. Come on. They, they do have Come the on. Eagles do have two games against the Giants who suddenly are looking a little bit better behind uh, Tommy DeVito. He, he, here is the real question. Are we buying wholesale into what the Cowboys are selling? They've looked yeah. so good. Yeah. Dak Prescott has looked so good. We've got people thinking this is finally the year. I think Stephen A. Smith is actually nervous at this <laughs> moment. <laughs> you, you tell me. I mean, I don't know what you're watching if you don't believe in what you've, what you've seen from this team. They've been on an incredible run. It doesn't seem fluky. It seems quite sustainable. I think it, most times you say turnovers is not something that you can replicate, but they've been doing it for, seems like, three or four years. They're creating these turnovers with the way that they coach these players and the type of players that they have. And as we talked about before, it often comes down to the quarterback. Dak is out of his mind right yeah, now. Yeah. There is oh, yeah. nobody in oh, yeah. football playing better than him at the quarterback position for an extended period of time. It's hard to imagine that they could be a fluke with a player like yeah. that. Now, listen, it, it, Dak has, has led this team and got this team where they need to be. Beating the Eagles, the, not just beating them, but beating them the way they beat them mm. last week is a tremendous uh, confidence builder for, for this football team. So are they in the conversation? Absolutely the conversation for the NFC for the Super Bowl, all those things. But they're gonna have to play at this level. And that's the that's the deal. They got four tough ones. This thing is not gonna be, it's not been settled a month out of the season, let's put it that way. Is Dak the MVP of the league right now? Right now he is because of what happened last night with the Dolphins. Over the last seven games, Dak has 22 touchdowns, only two interceptions. If you, and that includes the 49ers game. But yeah. since that Niners yeah. game, I mean you're talking about this dude, 15 touchdowns, zero interceptions. Okay, I thought that the defense, the way they performed, was out of this world. The first time they played Philly, first six possessions, four touchdowns. Yeah. This game, they gave up six points. And Demarcus Lawrence talking about you got to hit him in the face right, and right. all that. That, to me, is the change for the Cowboys. They are no longer a finesse team that is just trying to win games. They're trying to smother you out. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what's interesting, like they, I don't feel like they elevated to beat the Eagles. No. Right? I think they just played their game yeah. and, and won by whatever, 20, 30. I mean, like that. So I, I think they're locked in. Like, situations matter so much. And one of the concerns about the Cowboys going into the season was the situation. Like, were they wrong to fire Kellen Moore and put everything on Mike McCarthy and overhaul? You know, they, those of us who were concerned about that, myself included, yeah, were wrong. I mean, they, they, the Cowboys were right. To, to make that move because obviously Dak Prescott and Mike McCarthy have, have locked in together on something good, and you can see it. That offense looks like it's in rhythm. They look like they could beat anybody right now. I do think if you believe it's a quarterback award, then Dak is the winner. Right. If, you, if you allow for other – I think Tyreek Hill does no belong doubt. in the conversation for MVP. The only thing I'll say – the only thing I'll slightly disagree with is they could beat anybody. I, uh, right. I, I believe this is the San Francisco Invitational in the NFC yes. right now. That unless they lose one of their most important players, I, I, believe, I don't know that the Cowboys, the Eagles, or anybody else can play with them the way they yeah, look right I mean, right I think now. the Cowboys definitely can, but it, the, if they start the game the way they started against Philly, yeah. that's what it comes down to is you get a way to get Demarcus Lawrence and, um, and Micah Parsons, you have them more involved if you get a lead. It right. seems like no one's going to be able to stop Dak from scoring points. So if they get up against Let, let, let me say this, too, early, the, as we're all on the Cowboys, and, I, and listen, Dak has played lights out. The defenses they have played over, you know, including the Eagles twice, none of those defenses, 
defenses have presented much challenge right. to this right. point. As you get into the last four games and in the playoffs, those defenses tighten up. It gets yeah. more difficult. Like, it is, it is not going to be a boat race type situation. Final I agree thought. with you, and that's why I think the emergence of Jake Ferguson down the middle oh, of the field has huge. been huge for the Cowboys. That's a great point. And the past two games, they've given Tony Pollard 23 touches. Yep. It's been amazing yep. the way that they've developed this offense. They've gotten better Absolutely. and better.